بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ألهمنا مراشد أمورنا وأعذنا من شرور أنفسنا أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال الذين كفروا لا تسمعوا لهذا القرآن وقال الذين كفروا لا تسمعوا لهذا القرآن والغو فيه لعلكم تغلبون In this verse Allah Tawarruq Tala speaks about a sentence which were made by the people of Kufar. This was not made by a small group of a group that did not understand they understood that the light of Islam is different from every material power that we have around us. So example, when the light goes on, darkness goes away. Darkness will only settle if there's no light. In this last few months when we had a lockdown, down the line perhaps you will understand or we will see a new world is going to come. Technology is going to reach a level which we can never imagine or we never dreamt about. And you will just say 10 years ago the world was so different. It took such a small period of time to make that jump. Perhaps you will understand it the day you see it. We are going to make a jump and be ready for that jump. When World War took place, majority of the people who passed away in the war were Muslim. Although in the books of history they don't try to show that. They explain it as a European war, but after the war, the Khilafat came to the ground. Majority who passed away were Muslims. The main target of the world war was to bring an end to the Islamic Khilafat. It was after world war that Israel was created. It was after world war that America came as a world superpower. It was not there before. Before world war, it was known as an Ottoman Empire. Empire means there was something called a Muslim Empire. After world war, there were states which were ruled by shaitani puppets. That jump that world war made the Muslim world take. Those who saw the next 50 years, the only thing they would say that just 50 years ago, there was so much of deen. But what happened? The people of deen all died. World war came and wiped away an entire generation. Wiped it. And the world changed so fast after because me and you grew up in it. We grew up in what was called the year 2000, the 20th century, 1970, 1980, 1990. We never saw 1900. Had you seen it, you would have understand that before that the world was not like how we see it today. And whoever saw now, when 20, 30, 35 is going to come, it will be a different world. A jump is going to be made. When World War took place, there were many, many who lost their lives in the war. But after the war, people lost their Iman. Listen again. When the World War took place, many lost their lives. But Iman was not lost. Whoever died in that war died as a unique shaheed. He was attacked on every side by the forces of the devil. They called it the allied forces. They landed from every side. The whole thing was a plan. So many passed away, but they got shahada. After the war, when so many countries now thought that the war has finally come to an end, that's when the war on Iman started. Whether it was Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Today what we are seeing in Syria, Bashar al-Assad oppressing those people so much. But that oppression that's taking place is because after so many years the people of Sham started saying we want Islam back. Once upon a time they had Islam. World War took place, they were wiped out. Wiped out. Now they started making a cry for Islam and that's what we are seeing today, oppression. 
The only thing is at that time there was nothing called WhatsApp. There was no way you could find out what's happening in Yemen, what's happening in Iraq, what's happening in Turkey. Turkey was the Khilafa, Darul Khilafa, center of the world. Turkey would explain to you that if we were the most powerful Muslim state in the world, but in 20 years after that there was no Islam in Turkey. There was no Islam. The Muslim woman became European. The bars opened up in front of masajid. The masajid became museums. When that happened to the center of the Islamic world, which produced the best of scholars of the era, then what was going to happen around? That next era where the war took lives and gave them shahada, the next era took iman. But war changes. Man, when he thinks of war, he only thinks of when world war, they said, what was world war? They said, world war brought in a new era of fighting. That's why it was different from previous. People understood how to fight with the bow and the arrow. No one understood how to fight with the weapons that world war was going to bring. When those helicopters were coming and dropping, the people looking were wondering, I never saw something like this before. What is falling? But as those bomb, bombs were falling, when what they call the atonic bomb, one, and an entire nation just went. The world never ever dreamt that someone will be so strong to create something like this. How that helicopter just came. One drop and gone. It brought in a new era of fighting. So we became used to what is called this era of fighting. We became used to missiles. A new era will come. The new era is what we saw in the last few months. This was also a war on mankind. But this war never need any gun to be put on a person's head. This was called a war which was more deadly than even the previous wars. It knocked the entire world and brought them onto their knees. Before this, when war would take place, it could hit one country, not the world. So if a country came and said, stop your businesses, think about me and you. That man who woke up every day in his life, 7 o'clock, because his shop must open at half past 7. Even when he was half dying, he would make sure, who's going to open my shop? But when this thing came, this was a war. It made the entire world shut down. Those that had to die, died and they got a unique level of shahada. Many suffered. The economic reaction of this thing was that people who never dreamt about zakat ever entering their house, they also had to send a message, I need zakat. I won't come out of this. But as we saw in world war, whoever died in the war, they got shahada. Who lived to see after the war, their iman was attacked. Me and you, we lived through this virus. But now be ready for the imani attack that comes after. This was also a war. And after every war, when everyone left down their guard, when they speak about 5G, that word 5G had to be so important in their life, the shaitani world's life, that in preparation of whatever this 5G is, they were ready to allow all this to happen. It's no joke. Or it's no, nothing not known, that while we were all locked up at night, 9 o'clock you got a curfew, you can't go out. But there were definitely people who were outside. When the military was sent, their job wasn't to send to make sure no one comes out. You send the military to make sure no one sees what's happening. You don't send the military, otherwise the military will say, I'll also die at night. You send a military to make sure something is happening in the country you don't watch. What happened in our country from 9 o'clock till 4 o'clock, we will never know. But just think about this. How is it that the entire world goes into an economic fall? At the time when there's no money at all, 
We'll just come out of this by January. And even South Africa will say, we have investors from around the world coming in. And we are ready to go one step to the future. The first poster perhaps South Africa took out on this coronavirus. At the bottom of the poster, they put one sign there, Vision 2030. This virus is supposed to be so dead, deadly that they told us we'll all die before 2025. When they put that sign, Vision 2030, it means the virus will take us to 2030. The virus was meant to put us in a new era. A few years ago, we went, at that time when people would go for Umrah, they would see Vision 2030. They never thought South Africa also got a vision. South Africa, if you look at the state of our economic country, you'll think tomorrow we'll fall flat to the ground. We will reach 2030. South Africa got a vision, we're going to reach 2030. And South Africa is going to be a big country by that time. We will be a major player in this game. That is why the next few days, as you will see, our own political world, where big, big people will be brought down, and me and you will get happy that they caught him at last. At last they caught him, they only catch when they want to catch. This is not a fair world this year. This is a shaitani world. When they want us to make us smile, we smile at something which could make us cry. There will be many politicians who will come down in the next few days. You stole so much, you stole so much. And all of us will say, Alhamdulillah, and we're supposed to. But who's going to take their place? The one who's going to take their place is not going to be anything better. The one is being brought down to make place for the one who has to come in. That one who has to come in is going to change this country also. South Africa is a major player in this game for going future. That is why they invested so much of money in the country. That amount that they put in, the shaitani world is such... When they entered South America, their only one desire was everyone die in South America. Where they ever like people. And what they call the lower class of people, their desire is kill them all. If that virus was really as deadly as they said, we would be the last country they would have brought aid to. They came running with the aid because South Africa is a major player in this game. Why we have to say it is because when it starts, when Turkey was a major player in bringing down the Khilafat, it was after the Khilafat fell that from all the Muslim countries, the one that suffered the most was the land of Turkey. The one that suffered the most. The Iman was taken to levels you can never imagine. Now today when Allah created a new presidency in Turkey, people who survived until now are realizing I was an atheist up till now. Had I died in the last 40 years, I was Jahannam forever. To create an atheist mind in a land of a Muslim, South Africa is not a Muslim land. So if we are going to be a major player for the next 30 years, and that attack that is going to be launched, which will be in the other African countries, will not be as bad as South Africa. We will be attacked. When an attack takes place, it is necessary that everyone learns something called a shield. This verse I read was explaining that shield. When the people of Kufar said, La tasma'u lihaz al-Quran, that make sure you do not hear this Quran, wal Lagwa means create an environment of news and noise and commotion and entertainment. Lagwa. Wal a lot of noise, a lot of entertainment. That entertainment must be living in you and out of you. What you saw on the phone today is not the end. It's just the beginning. A time will come where they'll put a glass spectacle on you. Optometrists will make the most money. Because in those glasses will be your life. It will be your computer. It will be your enjoyment. It will be what you dream about, what you think about. You will not have to touch a button to look for something. You will think it. And your eye perhaps will give it. 
We might see an era in the next 10 years which could be what they will call a replica of paradise. And it will be offered to me and you also. That you want paradise, now come and take it. So even if your wife is not really what you wanted, then you don't look at her directly, you put on your glasses. When you put on the glasses, it will allow a screen to show you another woman. Then you will tell your wife, I never knew you so smart. But the zina will be right here. But today to make that zina, you have to take out that phone. There's still a slight distance to go to the pocket. Perhaps in the next five years, you will not have to go to that phone. It will be here. At that time, that man who is told, look after yourself because after this is paradise. Meaning you just have to pull a little bit. Don't lose your iman right at the last. When people say we are at the end of times, we are at the ending. The ending means that ship came so far. But just before the ship has to reach its shore, that's when the enemy sends that final attack. We are in that last part. Whoever can just now make it to the shore. But who will make it was the one who understood before they reached the attack. Where the captain said, put on your life jackets. That because the journey up till now was so safe, it doesn't mean it's going to be safe. So everyone put on the life jacket. This ayat was to say, you put on your life jacket now. This Quran, where before in our houses, boys became hafiz of Quran, which was called an honor for the family. It was called, your father will be given a crown. It was called, you will get so much of reward in Jannah. Today this Quran is called, it's vital for the protection of your iman. If you read it, it will wipe away poison. If you don't raise it, you will be poisoned. We are entering the era of poison. It will be poison from day one. The school will be poisoned. The syllabus will be poisoned. It will be so filthy and dirty that the teacher also will think, how do I say this? But the law will be, you will have to say it whether you like it or not. A mother will not be able to tell her child, that you can't do these things. There will be no level called modesty. It will be a world of being an animal. Because when technology reaches a level that puts everything in your finger and in your eye, a man becomes an animal. Humanism meant we will meet your every desire. Man's every desire in this world cannot be meant. Unless man becomes animal. He loses what is called insaniyat. A woman in front of him loses her value. She just becomes an item for his enjoyment. It can be a woman in parda, a woman out of parda. I am an animal. When the lion goes to hunt, he doesn't worry who is hunting. In the next 10 years, they want to create those animals. If you don't believe it, go and look at what the syllabus of school is going to become in the next few years. That boy who grows up with that school syllabus, what else do you think he will become but an animal? From that young age, they will tell him that you will go beyond what is called. When we, in the past, they would just say a boy can meet with a girl in school. Then they let the two of them sit together. Then they said, you all must talk. One day you have to get married. You have to know how to relate with a girl. So he took her phone number. He came home. The mother smiled. That Aisha and Muhammad, one day maybe they'll get married. But in the next 15 years, it might not happen like that. In the next 15 years, what happens if you find on your son's phone pictures of naked boys? And on your daughter's phone, pictures of naked girls? Then when your child brings that child home, you can't say one day maybe you will get married. On that day it will just be bleeding. You will be bleeding tears. Because what is my son? That son says, Daddy, I don't want to get married. Because I just don't like another girl. But Daddy, I'll bring one boy home. 
to avoid that poison hitting our houses. The time has come before the attack, this Qur'an must become everything in our house. وَسْلَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا Quran That syllabus will poison your child's mind if there's no Qur'an that he has been reading. You will have to make a law that if you go school, when you come back you have to read Qur'an. Otherwise that poison is not going to come out. When you come home you have to read Qur'an. All me and you have to think about is how important is it that my son must walk towards Allah. Because when life became important for me, didn't I make a law? They said that if you don't enter the shop without sanitizing, don't enter. So I put a sign there, no mask, no entry. If the man said, I don't put on a mask, I won't enter. In the past I would tell him, your business is the most important, come in, come in. During this last few months, I told the person, I don't want your money. You don't follow protocol, don't come into business with me. That child in school, we found they were washing their hands hundred times in the day. The mother, the father said, just carry on washing, you mustn't die. So very good, you were worried of the health of your child. But I can tell you, if that child becomes an animal, a day will come where you say, I wish you had died 30 years ago. They are not out to save mine and your child. Had the shaitani world been out, they would not have created things that what we are seeing around. The health of our children is not priority at all. It is that these boys must become animals. These girls must become animals. And the biggest target is the people of Iman. How important this is for the next few years. Whether your child is doing hifz, that thought that if you do hifz, you make sure you learn your Qur'an, you remember your Qur'an, that thought must be forgotten also now. Tell the child, go and do hifz, just with the intention that after you do hifz, it will be easy to read Nazira. So at least for three years, you will be reading Qur'an in front of your Ustad. Even if you don't know it so well, don't worry, because at least you're reading one boy came to me and he said that his mother said to him, you're taking too long in your hips. He says, but I'm only marrying, managing to learn little. I said, how long you think you might take? He said, perhaps another seven years. I said, Mubarak, seven years of Quran will save you for seven years. You just carry on going to class. Tell your Ustad, I haven't come to finish Quran because I'm scared if I finish, I'll stop reading. I have just come because if you don't call me here, I'm not going to be reading Quran. We in a new era, prepare for the new attack. Hiv's classes can change now. Now it's not only that the young boy must become Hafiz. That Hiv's class is the people of the town must read Quran. So after Fajr we're having classes. Some boys will be reading to the Ustad. Other people of the town also sit in the masjid. Your son is sitting here, you're going to wait for him. You take out your Quran and read, Why? Where he is going to be attacked, you're also going to be attacked. You don't read your Quran and that attack comes. It will finish your mind, you will find no enjoyment with your wife. She doesn't read Quran, she'll find no enjoyment in the husband. Cheating will become part of the family. Fights will become part of the family. An evil nature, why? You're becoming an animal. After the corona is called animalism, that is called vision 2030. Where the world will go and fulfill their every desire. لا تسمعوا لهذا القرآن It will only work however they said if you don't listen to this Quran. How much you will read you will be saved. May Allah tabarakallah make me and you from the people of Quran. Our hips class must now change. Our madrasa must change. The people who are not coming must just sit. Just sit you read your Quran. Even if you forgot your Qur'an, once upon a time you did hifz. No one's going to ask you to go on the musalla and read taraweeh. The purpose of that hifz was to make it easy for you to read inside. So even if you forgot your entire Qur'an, tasheelul qira, take your Qur'an, sit there in the back, and finish your four pages. Finish your five pages. People ask, how much Qur'an I must read to make sure I don't get affected? The law in Qur'an is even a little is locked. Even a little is locked. 
Even a boy who reads one page of Quran, one light also takes away darkness. One light also, but put off that one light. And now the entire room is in darkness. When we stop reading Quran, that light goes off. Soon as it goes off, the germ enters. When this few months showed a sickness which shocked the entire world, the best of doctors did not have an answer. What comes after it is going to shock everyone else. Scholars will be looking shocked. Intelligent people will be looking shocked. Parents who said, I, looked, I knew how to look after madrasas, he will say, I can't look after my child. Everyone will be shocked. It is this Quran that will save our lives. When this lockdown started at that time, my desire was that because Quran is now so important in the lives, so just to have what was called translation of a few verses of Quran, that's why we started the series, which is called Series of, from the Quran, where one one surah was taken, the name of the surah was looked at, and just a crux of that meaning was given, so that people can really understand what this Quran is. But now I will give one example of it in the bayan. But this bayan is not that only you listen to the meaning of Quran. Whoever will read Quran. This Quran will do it all. You put off Quran, it goes black inside. When darkness enters, the snake comes. Every rodent comes. Every evil comes. Put on even one small light and it all goes out. The purpose of this bayan is that may Allah tabarukala make it after today. Everyone goes back and looks in his life and says that does a day pass where the people of my house do not touch the Quran? And we will see perhaps Lord days pass. And we all make tawbah to Allah. And we say, oh Allah, you gave this as a life. This is called now my life jacket. That if the ship is hit and the captain says, get ready to jump, the life jacket is already on. 